Hey, what's going on guys? Rudelinol here, and today we're looking at some more Python. In fact, we just finished installing Idle, our new uh, our new code editor, in that last tutorial. So now we're going to be playing around with it just a little bit. Uh, you can go ahead and open up the program, open up Idle. Uh, if you're running Windows, you might want to use your start menu, uh, look for the program Idle, it should be under Python, that folder, and yada yada yada. If you're on Linux, you can just uh, look for the application, like the desktop, the shortcut, if you have it on that sort of thing. Or you can just start it up on the command line, with with idle. I, in fact, am running Unity, so I'll just type in idle there, and boom, it will pop right up. So, now, I want you guys to be looking at the menu items. Uh, you can see file up at the top, you can see edit, debug, options, windows, all this, all these sort of things, and uh, let's see what they can do. Uh, I'm going to try a new window, and this is normally where you would be writing new programs and new software if you were actually writing in idle. Um, the original window that you see pop up all, uh, most of the time when you uh, run idle by default is the Python shell. It's a little interactive shell where you can type in Python commands one by one and it will execute them while you're doing your thing. And that's kinda nice. It's really convenient if you want to just experiment with something and then you're done. Uh, but back on this little new window here, you can see some other options. You have almost all the exact same for file, but for edit you can uh, you can look for things, you can just find if you're trying to find a certain function or certain certain keyword or certain sort of thing inside your program if you have a really hefty thing. You can use regular expressions if you guys know what those are. If you don't, I'm probably going to cover those eventually. <laughs> uh, you can see to match the case, whether it's a capital I or lowercase i, the whole word, whether you're wrapping around, yada yada yada. So that's really convenient. Um, you can look for things again. You can look for selections. You can look for things in different files. Replacing is kind of like find, but it just replaces things. You can you still have that regular expressions option there. Uh, go to line, which would be convenient if you have a really really hefty and like a long program. I don't suggest that. I would try like importing different modules and files and that sort of thing. But maybe you don't do that. Who knows? And you just have that functionality if you need it. Uh, show call tip is rather convenient, and we can use that if we are running a sort of function. So if we try, actually, let's look at some other things first. If you look at show completions, if I go back to my old one here, if you do control space, you can see all these options that are like viable things that you'd be able to use in that circumstance, right where your cursor is. So I am actually going to use one called pow, which is a normal function that would just input a number to. Uh, Input a number to it, that power, the things that you pass to it. So you're gonna, since it's a function, you can just open up two parentheses. That's the way you would normally type it. I can get the more detail on that if need be, and that's definitely something in a future video. But if you look at it, you can see that you don't really know what you might be, have to be typing in here. So if you do control backslash, it'll show that little call tip, or what the things that you might need help with when you if you just need a tip when you're calling a function. Hence the name, show call tip. So we need a first argument of what we're going to be raising the power of, let's say, 2, and then let's raise it to the power of 4. So you can see that X there, and you can see Y there, and Z is optional, that's what those two surrounding brackets mean, but that is a whole other tutorial in itself. So you got those. That's awesome. Now, if you look at show surrounding parentheses or show surrounding parents, if you if you're inside a function little thing, if you do control zero, it'll show just for a short moment. This is the ground that it covers. This this parentheses matches up with that other parentheses, so you have those that little pair there. That's great. Now, what I'm going to show you now is a little bit of a big thing. If uh, I don't want to save that actually, but if we open up. This you might not be able to do this because you might not have any Python code to begin with. But if I open up Python and then I just open my own, open up a little script here that I've written myself, you can see that the color and the the white space, the way things look in Idle is almost really kind of elegant. It looks good. It's it's almost pretty. <laughs> it might depend on your personal opinion. It might depend on your style. But if all these colors you absolutely hate, you just think, oh man, I'd really like a different color for a certain keyword or that sort of thing, you can go up to Options and you can configure Idle. And this lets you choose a font. This lets you choose whether it's bold or not. You can change the size of the fonts if you need to. If you need to make it a little bit bigger, you always have that option. I'll try it uh, at 12. And see, now you can you can tell it's pretty big. Uh, I'm going to change that right back, because I prefer small. The more you can fit on the screen, the better. <laughs> so I'm just going to move these back over, in case you guys need to look at that little section over there. 
and we'll get back to configuring. So now that you have this option, you can change the font. I suggest monospace, anything that takes up the same amount of space for any single character. Uh, if you want to do something like Arial, I suppose you can, but I don't really recommend it. Um, I'm going to stick with Courier 10 Pitch just because I think that looks good. Indentation width, this is how big your indents are, like your tab key. I'm going to keep it as four spaces because that's a Python standard. Highlighting, this is where you can change some colors. This is kind of fun. Um, if you click on what you want to change, you can choose uh, like these comments here, things that would normally turn up as yellow or blue, strings that would turn up as green. You might not, you might not know all these terms at first, but I will cover them very soon. But you are still, you can, you have the option to change these things. Is exactly what I'm saying here. You can save these sort of themes, and I don't really plan on doing it, but you can just choose the color to whatever you want. You have all these options here. You can type in a hexadecimal value if you want to. And yeah, it's really kind of convenient. You go and, you can go into keys, and you can set your own custom key bindings. Uh, or you can do any sort of command that you that Python would recognize, like the actions, things that it might know or might not know, end of file, find again. I myself haven't played with these options too much, but they are here in case you ever need them. Uh, and then general, you can set these different things, and that's kind of what I was getting at earlier, if the startup preferences, once you run the program, you can decide whether it runs this edit window, the one that you saw back here, or the shell window, where you'd be able to type in the custom commands, and well, not so much the custom commands, but you'd be able to interact with it at, at runtime, and that sort of thing. At the start of run, like if you, uh, actually when you autosave, if, if you run a program that you're editing in idle, you have to save it before you run it, because Python, the interpreter needs to know that this is the save file before you do things. So it, you can you can prompt to save the file, or you can just completely disregard it whatsoever. But it does have to autosave no matter what you do when you save it. You can decide how big the window is when you start it up. Uh, you can decide some character encoding if you need to, and that sort of thing. So that's kind of convenient. And it's something you can mess around with if you ever feel the need to, or you just want to make your editor something more that, that feels more easy to use for you. You can make it your own home. So get comfortable, get acquainted, and that sort of thing. Uh, Windows, you can just switch back and forth between the Python shell and the things that you have open currently within idle. And help, you can just check out exactly what you're using. You can check out idle, what it really is. Um, you can see things where you need, might need to talk to other people if you need help with something. Uh, you have the version, the idle version, the TK version. The TK is the graphic user interface that it's using to run the program, that sort of thing. Uh, but we'll go into that later. Um, and then you can go into help for idle. These are sort of command things and what everything does in a more detailed sort of thing that I've been able to do. So I suggest you look through this if you ever feel the need to. But I've just tried to do a quick rundown of what it is that you have the option to do here. And yeah, that's it's a pretty hefty... It's a, it's a hefty read. <laughs> but uh, they do offer tips, it looks like, so you can do a lot of really cool stuff. Now, if you go into Python documents, this is grand. This is where you're going to probably want to spend most of your time. This will open up a web browser where you'll be able to look at uh, new things in Python. You can look at things that uh, you can do with libraries or other other things you can import into your language to have more functionality and more extensibility. You can uh, look at syntax and the things that you might need to learn or the certain keywords that it might have, uh, how to set things up, how to do certain things in the code, um, and even a tutorial. So you can go ahead and get started with things that you might find interesting. And if you, in case you need like a text way to be able to read things, you have that option and it's like accessible right there from idle, and that's pretty convenient. You can see what's new in the version. You can see as much as you feel like you might need to. So I really recommend you explore and see what they have here in this documentation. Uh, there are many of times when I would just try to Google something that I know I can do in Python, and I just get redirected right back here. So I wish I myself wish that I was more acquainted with this little index and this little this little glossary here. But there's plenty of great things like, hidden in these pages, so I really recommend you, uh, oh, that's cool, I didn't know you could do that, <laughs> you can hide the little menu there, but yeah, I really recommend that you look through this if you ever feel the, the need to, so, it's there in case you need it, I'll close right out of that, and yeah, Python code is beautiful, it uses a lot of white space and makes sure to look thing, makes sure 
that it has white space and it's clean. So depending on how you want to program, you can program exactly how you feel like you need to. If you want to make things cluttered, you can do that. If you want to space things out and give yourself some room to think, you can do that. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> when you look at the colors, uh, you can look at th commands that you can do and things that you can run with inside idle. I really recommend you check out these commenting and uncommenting regions. You can tab things, but that's a little bit more talk for a later tutorial. So, yeah. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope this, I hope this kind of helped. I hope you were able to look at things that you might not have known about in idle beforehand, especially if this is your first time running it. And when you're writing code, if you do such, you're going to be able to have these little commands, these little techniques that can help you while you're writing your stuff. So, thanks again, guys. Uh, see you in the next video.